Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be my last installment in my makeup inventory and collection series, which is day number six, and this is lip product. So welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Um, if you're into eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice and getting the use out of your makeup, then definitely stay tuned because that's what my channel is all about. And this video fits in perfectly because I decided to sort of film you going through my collection in preparation for declutter. So I do this thing where I try to decide what I would like to declutter before I actually sit down and film declutters. And I do that for a number of reasons. A, to sort of really sort of go through things and go like, oh wait, I had forgotten I owned this, but also to swatch things out and to see all the differences. I don't swatch in decluttering videos, not because I don't want to, but because it would make me make it impossible for me to declutter. So you've got, you, you've got my entire lip co uh, product collection lying in front of you. And, and this is the overflow. Like this, I, ca I can no longer house it. And then I've got like loose Kiko things over here. So also the lipstick collection needs to be decluttered in due time. So we're gonna go over glosses first, then bullet lipsticks and liquid lipsticks. And I will be doing as many swatches as possible for you again today so that you can see how these compare and that I also know what I have again. So um, let me clear the deck so we can take these glosses center stage. <laughs> Welcome to all of my glosses. As you can see, I've got quite a few and I will be going through these quite quickly. Um, this is definitely due a declutter. I tend to reach for just one shade of gloss most often and that's a mauve. This is my favorite gloss of the minute. I could get rid of pretty much all of these and just keep this one and I'd be happy. This is the Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss from Catrice in the shade Lifting Nude. And I have just found myself reaching for this kind of like nudie lip gloss if I want to go for a nude lip, like something that's really, really nude. Um, so I'm not really doing this gloss justice, am I? But yeah, there it is. Um, so in terms of like other mauve shades that I have, something like the Fenty Beauty Mauve Wipes, uh, this is one of their cream glosses. I liked it better than the uh, fussy one I have, but this is more cool toned than the Catrice one. So that's different enough. And then I also have this Rare Beauty one. This is in nearly mauve, but it seems more plum <laughs> compared to these other things. So it could again be a little bit deeper. And this was one of my favorite gloss formulas in 2021 when I started trying glosses. So yeah, these are all different. And then I have this, uh, is this the Pillow Talk Jewel Lips? I think this is a Jewel Lips one. So it's got a bit of shimmer and I have found that I prefer glosses that don't have shimmers. So not sure I love this. Oh, this is a bit peachy as well compared to these other things. So not sure I need to keep that per se once we start decluttering. Um, then I have the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lip Gloss. This is very pretty as well. But this smells very strongly of cookie dough, which I don't love. Um, and then I, of course, have the instigator of all of the glosses you see lying in front of you. This is the Lux Gloss from ColourPop in the shade Figgy with it. And yeah, compared to these other things, I'm not sure I still need to keep the ColourPop around. Um, more actual mauve tones, uh, Muse from Lisa Eldridge. I like this, but I don't love the formula of the Lisa Eldridge ones, which is why I only have these two. Um, but this is a bit more brown toned. The lipstick of this is one of my favorite nudes, but not this one per se. Um, and then I have this volume booster, volumizing lip booster from Catrice in the mauve the berry shade. 
So according to Catrice, this is more of a berry, but it's definitely like that deeper thing. And this does have that like tingling sensation kind of thing going on. Um, so there you have that. And then I also have this one that's a mauve, the Wayne Goss Gloss in the shade Petunia. Like, this is just creamy mauves. And this is all I wear. These shades. In terms of gloss. The rest of this... Yeah, there are a couple of shades here I like, but this is pretty much my go-to. So I don't need to keep all of those for sure, like they're too similar. I can definitely narrow this down, but if I were to narrow down this entire gloss collection, I would say get rid of all of this and just keep like these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shades. I would be happy. I mean, this is a clear gloss, so do we need to swatch this? I hope not, but I just have the one. And then this is also pretty much clear. This is the Glip, Lip Glow Oil from Dior. Um, this is just in the shade pink, which is one of my favorites. So loving those. Need to put these here. Um, more lip oils. These are by Catrice. I have the shade uh, Cherry Blossom Glow and Glossy Blackberry. And again, I don't feel I need to keep both of these. I mean, this has a bit more color to it, but it's again very sheer. You probably wouldn't even see it. And this is pretty much like the Dior one, but then by Catrice. This is a really good lip oil formula. But I feel, do I need to keep more than one lip oil? And I love, I would wear the Dior one over these every time. This Huda Beauty Silk Balm was in the, a gift with purchase. This is in the shade Blush. And this is pretty, but it's again, sort of like very, very light. Perhaps a bit too light for my liking. This is a Nabla glush, a gloss. This is the Nabla shade Shine Theory in Toxic Love. And this is really, really pretty. But on the lips, I didn't love it. Um, because it's just a little too shiny and it just doesn't really work with my lip shape, I find. And I actually feel similarly about this Patrick Ta one. This is in She's an Influencer. And this is pretty. I mean, as far as sparkly glosses go, I kept this one, one around last year because it is pretty. It's like a nude and then it just has a lot of iridescent sparkle. But I don't use gloss a top over a lipstick, like ever. I will wear them by themselves, but I don't ever wear something like this. I didn't know that at the time. This thing... I don't even want to swatch it. This is so old, it just needs to be chucked in the bin. Uh, this is Fastest. This is one of the very oldest things in my makeup collection. It still smells fine. I don't know how Dior can keep a gloss smelling okay for eight years, but they do. Um, more shiny glosses then. The Juvia's Place uh, gloss in So Glazed. I think this is going to have a similar fate as the Nabla and the Patrick Ta, but this does have this lovely like purpley pink. Ooh, that's very thick. It still smells okay. But this is like that very soft, rosy pink. It's pretty, but I don't really need that. I didn't, I think, I don't think so. And then I have Fussy from Fenty. This is another shimmering number. And I like this, the gloss bombs, but I, like I said, I love the cream one better than this. So... Ugh, and the scent of this, it's very fruity. I don't like that. More Shine, this is by Dear Dahlia. This is in the shade Stardust. And this is a pretty pinky shade. Um, but again, on my lips, you really wouldn't be able to tell a difference between any of these. And then the only shimmering gloss I kind of care about is this Zoeva one. This is called Dream With Me Powerful Lip Shine. And this is really pretty, it's like iridescent, multi-dimensional sparkle, but there's not much of a base to it. So if I were to keep just one shimmering gloss, it would be this one. You can't even see that in this watch. But yeah, this is, I'm not sure if you can see, it's got like green and purple and gold. It's really pretty. Um, this is also sparkly. This is the Better Than Fake Lips in Shining Champagne. This is one of the last shades that Catrice did. Um, but this is again like just a clear gloss with some sparkle. I don't need that So why did I keep this around? <laughs> why do I keep these things? I don't know and then these two Colourpop things also have some sparkle Running through it. They're also luxe glosses in candy kiss 
which, I mean, it's nice, but I've just found that with the Luxe glosses, it's really dependent on the shade, whether it's gonna be nice. And this is just a little too light for my taste. And also this one, Panache, I liked as well. This has a bit more color to it, but this with this, you just can't really see the sparkle very well. So I was like, why did we put sparkle in that? Was that necessary? I don't know. So those are all of the sparkly glosses and I'm inclined to already pref like sort of predict that most of these are just gonna go because I don't wear those. But yeah, I got a lot of these because I wanted to test out formulas because I've discovered glosses quite late to the, like I was very late to the party and I was just trying out formulas and having fun. So they definitely serve the purpose in me sort of like knowing better what I like in terms of gloss. So they definitely serve the purpose. Um, then I have these mini ones. I have a Rare Beauty in Nearly Natural. This is too brown for me. It's like a bit too dark and a bit too brown. So I don't love that shade on me. I thought, oh, it's mini, I can use it up, but then the shade is just not perfect. And then this uh, Dior Glow, like the lip maximizer thing, I don't love this. It's just a mini, it's clear, you can't see it. Um, this is the Volumizing Lip Booster in Lost in the Rosewoods. So maybe I like this better than that true mauve tone that they have. Ooh, yeah. It's a bit more brown, but I would be more inclined to wear this than the other shade I have, which is right here. So that's this. That's more plum. But because it's so similar to the other Catrice gloss I already have, I would wear that over this, but this is a bit more my vibe in this formula and I don't need to keep two. Um, this Lisa Eldridge, my favorite one of the two I have, this is Songbird and this is a peach, which I didn't think I'd love uh, because I thought it was going to perhaps be too light for me, but it's sort of like what Kid and Mischief does for me in a lipstick, this does for me in a gloss. And then I just have some more of these Catrice ones, this nude one I like as well, this is Enhancing Ginger. Um, but again, I don't need to keep every nude lip gloss I have. And this is perhaps a little bit too light for my liking. But if you're looking for a good nude gloss, I would recommend this. And this is my favorite formula, which is why I have so many. This is perhaps a bit too brown. This is Boosting Brown. Yeah, not my shade. Um, but I do remember very much liking this berry shade. It's Fizzy Berry, and this is really pretty purple. And I don't love more intense gloss shades, but this was stunning on. And then I just have these collagen lip baths from Charlotte Tilbury. I have Refresh Rose. This was a mini sh set she did last year. Uh, and these are really hydrating. So these I'd like to keep around, but this shade doesn't really do much for me. I'd like to Pillow Talk and Walk of No Shame best. Um, especially Walk of No Shame also added a bit more color. Pillow Talk was again, a little bit too light for me, but I really like the formula. So I, I'm inclined to keep both of these if I were to declutter these. But yeah, this is Walk of No Shame, which is like a really nice like reddish nude. So I love that shade. So those are some of the other creamy tone uh, glosses I have. I have really found sort of like my end game when it comes to gloss, I feel. So I don't feel I need any others and I'm not really under hunt for those. So yeah, I just I just need to like fill one of these cubbies. When Once I get round to decluttering, the aim is to get my lip gloss collection down to one rather than two. Okay, so I've laid out all of my bullet lipsticks in its different color categories so that we can really do a good swatcheroo of what all these different lipsticks look like that in my brain fit into the same category. So we're gonna start here. This is going to be my little section in the middle where I can actually like show you things. And this is sort of like lighter nudes that I have. I don't have too many because it's just not my favorite category. Um, this is perhaps one of my favorites. This is Wedding Bells from Charlotte Tilbury. It's perhaps not as light as I think it is because I, I switched this category into like a lighter and a darker category halfway through sorting through these. So I might actually have more going on in this section here, but we'll do that next. Um, so this is what Wedding Bells looks like. And it's like this really pretty rosy nude shade, but it is quite warm. This shade from Kiko Milano, I don't know the shade name, but it's their Unlimited Stilo in shade 07. Uh, this perhaps could have gone with that 
like darker, sh uh, the darker shades as well. Um, but this is pretty similar to something that, you know, Charlotte Tilbury has to offer because Kiko is made in the same factory. I actually like the formula of the Kiko better. Then I have this M Cosmetic Stick. This is in the shade Van Gogh. And I tried to not twist this up too much because you can't really twist it back, I feel. Oh yeah, this is very similar. But this is very soft and therefore a little bit messy. Like, look at that. It's just a bit messy. But it's a very stunning formula. Then I have this uh, Essence Lipsticks. This is their Caring Shine Lipstick in shade 204. Uh, lipstick... Does it have a shade name? Oh, My Way. And this is the only one from this line that I liked. It's a pretty like nude shade for sure, but I don't think I need this necessarily. Um, and this smelled really weirdly. Like a very sweet, weird scent that I didn't love. But yeah, so far, um, all pretty similar. I have Meg's Max Twig. And this, I think, has expired. Uh, it's one of my favorite MAC lipsticks of all time. Um, it still swatches beautifully, but I, it's starting to smell a little bit on the funky side of things. Like, these should have, like, a vanilla scent, and mine smells like Play-Doh. So this, this leans it a little bit more cool tone than some of the other things. Then I have this uh, Catrice Shine Balm lipstick in Divine Femininity. And this is more like that pinky nude as well. I, I tend to prefer pinky nudes over like very beige things, but you can just see that this is a fair bit lighter. So I definitely think we're getting into like the light territory here. And then this is 030 from the Vegan Collagen Matte line in Be Fearless. And some of my drugstore lipsticks look like this. I'm terribly sorry, but these had a bit of an accident. So just putting it out there. But you know, these still work. They're just a little manky. Ooh, but this is pretty. I like that. I like the look of that. And then we have my Lisa Eldritch ones. And these, of course, if I were to declutter, aren't going anywhere, even though these are not the shades I love. The lightest one she does is Velvet Intrigue. And this is like beige. Um, it's perhaps similar to that Catrice one that I just swatched. Um, but this is a bit more peachy. And therefore not great for me. I have it to complete the collection. Um, then the lightest one is Velvet Fawn. And that's a little bit more wearable because it has a more browner undertone. And then we have Velvet Affair, which again could have gone with the next section, I'm sure. And I did find a dupe for this in my Kiko uh, lipsticks. So if you watch my Kiko lipstick video, then uh, you can see that this is pretty much spot on a dupe for one of the Kiko lipsticks I'm going to show you in a minute. I don't know where it went. Um, but yeah, these are my lighter tone nudes. And then we get the rest of that section that I had split out because these are all nude, nude lipsticks, but I feel they pull a bit warmer or darker than what we just saw. And these, um, if I'm not mistaken, no, this should go here. Um, because some of these are all in that sort of Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk kind of vibe. So let me just kick things off with pillow talk, which is nice, but it's a bit warm toned. And the one that I prefer over this, I mean, I still like Pillow Talk, don't get me wrong, but I prefer this. This is from Catrice, the Power Plumping Gel Lipstick in the shade Speak Up. It's discontinued, but I wore this so much that I actually used one of these up. I mean, on the lips, these are pretty much the same, especially if you build up the Catrice one. Like, it has that similar warm undertone. Um, and the, I actually have a backup of this. I used one up completely. I've been using this one and I have one in backup because they did discontinue it. And then all in a similar vein, some of these like Catrice limited edition uh, lipsticks I feel work in a similar sort of set. This is the Maleficent one from the Disney Villains collection and I was just curious to see. Yes, yeah, see? Pillow talk. That's very bang on the money. And this is a very nice formula. Is that, this is their collagen lipstick. Hmm may have to keep that into in the collection and then i just have these ones from the disney uh, classics collection this is the lady lipstick and again i felt this was similarish but this is actual sparkle running through it which is not my favorite but this all these all fit into that warm rosy undertone sort of nude category in my brain then the marie one is a bit more pink 
Um, it's a bit more pink, but I don't have that many like true like this kind of pinky nudes. So it had to go somewhere. So I decided to put it here. Um, but this is definitely more like peachy vibrant. I should have put this with some of my corals. Hmm. We've got corals coming up. Uh, so maybe I should swatch it again then. This is the uh, Melting uh, Kiss Gloss Stick from Catrice in 050. And I'm not sure... This is Soulmate. Um, and this is again that sort of warm, nudie, nudie shade. This is very sheer on the lips, but this is very pretty on. Yeah, this all fits into like the same vein in my brain. And then we have, oh, why did this go here? This is a separate category. <laughs> See, some of my categories merged, I think. So now we get like nudes that are a little bit more like peachy coral leaning. So this is Kitten Mischief from Lisa Eldridge. This is in her Luxuriously Loosened formula. Yes, I'm, my arm is getting stained, so I, for, I can't see anymore where I swatched. And you can just see it's a bit more peachy compared to everything else. Oops, it's getting stuck. And then here we have the Hydra Shiny St Lip Stilo in 06 from Kiko, which I think I'm just going to have to swatch it here because it's not going to go with Lisa Eldridge. I'm mixing some things up. Ooh, this is a lot more red. Hmm, it didn't look like it in the bullet, so maybe I should swatch that again with some of my reddish tone nudes in a minute. And then I have the Painted Veil from Gucci. This is in their Voile formula. And I feel it's very similar to Kitten Mischief, actually. Ooh, it's even more sheer. Um, but yeah, these are very comparable. So those are all of my lighter nude lipsticks. And I just have one section left, and these are like deeper nudes before we go into like browns. So and the reason why I wanted to put these four together is because it features one of my favorite nudes from uh, Lisa Eldridge. This is Velvet Muse, and it's far deeper than anything I've shown you so far, at least in my brain it is. So I hope I'm right. Oh. There we go. And in my brain, it has kind of replaced this. This is Rhubarb from Bright uh, Beauty. Um, and you can see how much I love this, but this has started to smell a little bit funky. Let me see what the formula is like. Ooh, this is still nice. But yeah, this has a bit more like plum running through it than the Velvet Muse one. So maybe it's still unique enough. I don't know. But yeah, Bite Beauty no longer exists. So should I still be wearing it? Then I have this Rare Beauty one in the shade Worthy. Oh, that's far lighter. In my brain, it was far darker than I thought than it looks here. So perhaps it should have gone with some of the lighter things. And I didn't love this because it's so warm. Like this is just not my shade, the Rare Beauty one. And then I have another Gucci one and this is Mildred Rosewood, which again, I thought I wanted to like put it up against the Lisa Eldridge just to see what it would do. But this is a little bit more reddish toned. Um, but yeah, that to me is also still a neutral for sure. But yeah, so I've got, I've got something that's a bit more like warm toned in the middle, something reddish toned, and then something a little bit more cool toned from Bite. Oh well. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me then do reddish toned nudes next. So we're going to kick things off with the Kiko one that I already swatched because I felt it was too red. Um, so this works quite well in this vein, actually. It's quite similar to Mildred Rosewood, actually. It's a bit more shiny, though. And then I have some of my K-Beauty lipsticks here, the 3CE in Mellow, Mellow Flower. And this is what you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean with a nude red, because this is like that sort of lipstick that also gives us like blurred edge when you wear it, but it's still very neutral, which is very pretty. The Ink Airy Stick from Peri Pera in Warmy Red, I feel does a similar thing. But this is a bit more orange toned. See? It's like this very powdery almost texture. It's very interesting. This is a bit more vibrant though. Um, and the instigator for this category is Stay Curious from MAC. This is really pretty. Yeah, see that fits into that, that category. That looks like a nude on my lips for sure. And then I have this from Lisa Eldridge. This is Spirited Away, which again, I feel is a nude on me, but it does look like a red. Like it's got that red quality that I like. 
and it's a nice really sheer but buildable quality so yeah maybe I don't need to keep the Mac now that I have the Lisa Eldridge those are very similar and then I have some more that I think fit the vibe this is glowing Jen from Charlotte Tilbury this is one of the hot lips Hmm. That definitely fits the vibe. And then I have another Kiko one here. This is the Glossy Dream Lipstick in 218. And that's another one where I'm like, yeah, that could definitely fit the vibe. I definitely don't need to keep all of these. Like these last three are pretty much the same. Like this Kiko one is pretty much a dupe for the, for the Lisa Eldritch one for sure. So yeah, those are all of my reddish tone nudes. But what category do I have most of? <laughs> Mauves. These are all of my mauve toned lipsticks, and I thought I still had my Urban Decay Back Talk, but I think it went bad last year, so I already, oh, already decluttered it, of course. So I definitely, once I do a declutter, I need to cull this, because this is far too much. And Lisa Eldridge doesn't really do a very good mauve yet, so when she does, but let's just start here. Kiko's 315, this is from their Velvet Passion line. And this is such a great cool tone mauve. Like this is the reason why I wanted to try more Kiko lipsticks. I mean, it's really, really pretty. I'm not sure, not all of these are cool tone mauves. But we've got plenty. Here is the 040 shade from the Shine Bomb lipstick range from Catrice. This is Secret Crush. This is really pretty as well. This is a bit more warm toned. But that's a very stunning shade as well. And this is from their Vegan Collagen Matte line. This is in B Strong. And this one looks a bit mangled again, but very pretty shade. Ooh, do you see that? That's very pretty. Then I have London Season from H&M Beauty. This is from their matte range, and this one also looks atrocious, but this is a very pretty mauve as well. But it's again more warm leaning. Max Mare, if you're looking for a good cool tone lipstick, this and Brave from MAC are both great ones. This is a MAC formula though. And again, this may actually be expired, but it's sort of like, yeah. No, it still smells okay. This still smells good, which is good. I used to wear this all the time, but I've just found other other um, mauve -y tones that I like better. This is the Flower and Herb Power Plumping Gel Lipstick from Catrice in Magnolia Bouquet. And this is very light, very, very light, but it's got that almost blue quality to it. It perhaps looks a bit more pink compared to everything else that I've got going on here. Yeah, this is probably not my favorite, but if you're look so, looking for something very cool toned, that's pretty. Got an Essence one here as well. This is their Hydra Matte. This looks really terrible. And 401 Movement. This is stunning. If it, if it hadn't gotten completely destroyed. But yeah, this is a really pretty, more cool toned, mauve shade. But these smell really strongly of watermelon. If that's something you don't like... You're not gonna love this. Then I have this one, the Unlimited Stilo from Kiko. I believe this is called Mauve. It's shade number 22. I'm not sure if they still do this because they've discontinued quite a lot of their lipsticks lately. Um, but that's stunning. It's got almost a hint of gray running through it. And then I have Peggy Taupe from Gucci. This is their matte formula. I also have a Peggy Taupe, but it's more brown toned than it's in the sheer formula. And this is more pink almost compared to everything else. Reminds me a bit of rhubarb, but like less purple. Pretty. And then I've got some Charlotte Tilbury here. We have Very Victoria, which is one of my longstanding favorites. This is more of that warm tone mauve, I think. Yeah, this is almost brown. And then we have Secret Selma, which is actually much more plum leaning. This is like one of the coolest lipsticks I have found in the Charlotte Tilbury line. And in cool, I mean cool undertoned. Because everything she does is so warm toned. But this, as you can see, compared to everything else, it's quite similar to other things. 
And then I have another one of these gloss, Melting Kiss gloss sticks from Catrice. This is in 020 ooh, Catching Feelings. And this is a little bit too light, I guess, for my liking. So not sure I need to keep that around. But yeah, it's a pretty like mauve shade, if that's what you're looking for. Then I have more MAC here. This is Captive, which is a plum, which it doesn't really go here, but it doesn't really go with any of the other categories. So I just decided to pop it in here uh, because I feel it does compare to some of these earlier things we already swatched. Just a bit deeper, a bit more vampy, but it's not quite vampy enough to go with the vampy lipsticks if you catch my vibe. And then some more by Beauty here. We have Sake, which has always been one of my favorite, like very light mauve tone nudes. I'm just gonna swatch it here to the side because else I can't put it anywhere else. So that's pretty, but these bite ones, I'm not sure of these, I should still be wearing these. And this is Pepper, which was my other favorite nude. This is perhaps a bit more brown, but they're both in that mauve tone spectrum. So yeah, Sake is the cooler one, and Pepper is the more brown tone one. Um, it, looking at everything else I've got going on, I can probably get rid of the Pep, uh, the Bite Beauty one. So yeah, you can see what I've got going on here. An array of <laughs> mauve-toned lipsticks for sure. I always say how I don't love brown tones on myself, and... This is everything that I found in my lipstick collection that I would categorize as a brown. This definitely needs a cull. <laughs> this definitely needs a cull. I, I'm pretty sure this is also expired. It's by Beauty's Thistle. This is one of my first taupe lipsticks I ever tried and I loved it. Let me smell it. Yeah, this smells like Play-Doh. But this is very gray as well. But it was a nice cool tone to play around with at the time. It's definitely also got some purple running through it. Um, so yeah, this, probably time to declutter. Um, is there anything else that's this cool toned? I do have another taupey shade. This is by Catrice. This is their ultimate matte in the shade Topless in Love. But this is far more purple almost. This again had an accident, so do apologize for the state it's in. This is far darker, far more brown toned, but that is still a stunning lipstick. I wish Catrice would do these kind of things again, where they do more unique things. Um, then I think this one I need to show you next. This is Verve from MAC. And this is sort of like reddish tone, like it's got a bit of a red undertone. It's definitely warmer. But this is one of my new in MAC lipsticks. I got this on the back to MAC thing when I went to the UK. But that's like, if I were to wear a brown, it's this. So. I know that by now, these two I know I can get rid of, but we'll talk about that in the declutter again. I just want to swatch Velvet Decade next, because I feel that also has some cool toneness to it, but also some red. So let me swatch it next to this, just to see how it compares. But that's pretty. It's not my favorite Lisa Eldridge lipstick for, like, in any, by any means, but it is a nice lipstick. I'm glad to own it. And then these two browns, this is, this is Velvet Teddy, <laughs> which is one of my oldest Max lipsticks, but it still works and it still smells fine. Like after so many years, I just don't get it. And this is Whirl, which I always say how I love wearing these as an ombre lip together, but I haven't done that in the longest time. So yeah, you can just see that this is far better for me. I have this shade from Gucci. This is one of their Brill Brillant formula. This is Peggy Taupe in their other formula. And this is a really sheer lipstick. Like the Be By Beauty one is still very unique because it's so cool toned. Um, so it's a shame that that's expired, but this is really pretty too. And then in a similar vein, I have this creamy formula from H&M. This is I'm in shock which is like a milk chocolate. Oh, that's like Velvet Teddy vibes, for sure. It's a very pretty shade, but I don't wear it enough. And then I have this from Kiko. This is their Jelly Stilo in 515. That looks like a cool tone brown. It didn't, th I remember not liking this in the bullet at all, but then I put it on and it was, it was like one of those things where you look at it and you go like, do I like this, yes or no? Like again, compared to everything else, this is definitely more unique. 
And then I have two Lisa Eldridge ones. This is Meet Me in Berlin, which is definitely a brown. Oh yeah. Like perhaps if it's like the sheer formula, I do like a brown. And then I also have Painterly, which is again, a little bit more reddish toned perhaps. It's almost pink compared to everything else. <laughs> and then these are sort of like more rosy browns. So I have Bomb Girl, which is more like, I thought this was more of a berry shade, but now that I looked at everything together, I was like, that looks like a brown. So perhaps it is. Yeah, it's more red, but you know, fine. And then I also have Pillow Talk Intense which is definitely more brown toned. I thought this was going to look very differently when I ordered it. I uh, put some in the wrong category, but these are all of my brown tones. So definitely like such a shame that this no longer exists. Let's do corals next. And I'm not a lover of corals if they're not bright, so I don't have too many of these, but I found that this uh, Marie shade was perhaps a little bit too corally. So let me start there because it could be similar-ish to some of these things. It's perhaps too pink. I, I, I don't know. Stoned Rose from Charlotte Tilbury has never been my favorite. This is very orange. It's a terracotta. This is just not my shade. I don't understand why I ever bought this. And then I have Sexy Sienna. This is one of my very first Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. And it's sort of like the peachy version of that Catrice lipstick. That's why I wanted to swatch it here. And then I have Dance Guard from Lisa Eldridge, which is nice, but th these kind of coral shades, they just clash too much with my undertone. So it's never great. So, oh, I feel that the Catrice one is very close to the Lisa Eldridge one for sure. And then we have like more rosy pinks. Like I also have a bright pink section. Um, but these are like the more softer rosy things and these are more like intense rosy things. I don't, I'm not a big fan of a rosy pink. So this is a Zishi lipstick. This is in M05. I believe the shade is called Princess and this is just not my kind of shade. I put it on and it's very pretty, but it's just, it's got so much warmth. It's almost peachy on me, which is not great. I have the other Moonshot uh, lipstick I have. This is 604. Um, this is pretty. Why did I put this with the rosy things? Oh, because it is rosy. But it's perhaps a bit more deeper rosy. I'm not sure. This is one of those lipsticks where I'm like, it's a bit of an undecided color. So I don't know what to do with that. Velvet Beauty, the very, like one of the very few cool tone lipsticks that Lisa Eldridge does. This is a really nice cool tone pink. And then I also have Velvet Petal, which is like a lighter rosy pink, which has a bit more warmth. And I also have Rose Official, which is like the luxuriously loosened version of something like Velvet Blush more so than Velvet Beauty, I feel. But yeah, this is really pretty too. And then these are the other rosy things I have. I have the Melting Kiss Gloss Stick by Catrice in 090 this is crazy over you i think somehow the name is not that perfectly matched but this is really really stunning this is probably the only one of these i'm going to keep but this is a really nice one it shows up beautifully and then i have a similarish kind of thing from kiko this is the joyful holiday lipstick in 03 this is pretty, but it's just not necessarily my favorite. Like this kind of color, I don't necessarily go, go for all the time. And then we just have a bunch of these Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. Let me start off with Love of My Life, which is very pink. And I didn't think I'd like this when it was launched. It, it, just, it just wasn't one that was on my radar. And then I started wearing it and on me, that blue undertone really pops through, which is why it works. And then I also have Skyscraper Rose, which is one of my favorite shades she does. This is in the Insanely Saturated Lipstick range. And this is very vibrant. So perhaps I should have put it with my vibrant pinks. 
But if I put it with my fiber pinks, it's not gonna go. <laughs> Cause it's too purple. Like it's, it's too rosy for that. And then I have Velvet Blush Lightly, which is like, this is as close as Lisa Eldridge gets to a mauve, but I feel it's too pink, but it's close. <laughs> And one of my recent favorites is Velvet Blush. And this is like, it's not even just a deeper version of Blush Lightly. This was launched first, but it's like, like it's got some plum, it's got warmth, it's got everything. And I love wearing it now that it's like the winter season. Those are all of my rosy pinks. Um, I definitely have more vibrant pinks coming up in a minute as well. Time for purples. <laughs> These are all like plummy, purpley kind of shades that aren't berry and that aren't very vampy. So these all have a level, level of vibrancy to them. And I have two magenta shades in here. And this is the Mesmerizing Magenta shade from Maybelline. And this lipstick is just so tough to open. This has always gotten mangled because when I bought it, it was in my suitcase and it melted. So this is like, it's not a pink, it's not a purple, but I had to put it somewhere. So I decided to put it here. This is uh, Cassis from Lise Watche, which is a Canadian brand. And I feel this is similar-ish to the Maybelline one for sure. Um, I've again had this for a while. It's a, perhaps a bit more vibrant, but it still smells okay. We also have Radish from By Beauty. And this is one, if this ever expires, it still smells fine. It still has that lemony, pink lemonade kind of scent rather than Play-Doh scent. And it also swatches quite smoothly, but it's like, it's in that similar vein. And this is a lovely formula. And then I think we should next go in with Rebel, which is again, is it purple? Is it, is it berry? Is it whatever? But it, it, it swatches a little less intense than you might think. And then we also need to swatch Firebird here, which I've always felt is the like more interesting f friend of Rebel. But here you can see that it again has like, it's more of like a pink with a purple flash, which is really interesting. Um, and then I think we're gonna go in with Jody Mauve, Wild Mauve from Gucci. This is 714 in their Brillant. And this looks really dark and intense until you swatch it. And it's definitely more of a purple than anything else because of the sheer formula. And I think then it's time for Flat Out Fabulous from MAC. This is again, is it a pink? Is it a purple? That sort of vibe, um, really pretty. It's just a really nice vibrant shade. But I think I just, this has probably run its course in terms of what I like. It's one of the retro matte finishes, which, which was never my favorite. And then I have this one from Catrice, the Shine Bomb Lipstick in Magic Lavender. A lavender lipstick, oh yes, from Catrice. And it's a little bit sheer, but you can build it up. So if you love your cool tones, maybe this, it may work as a nude on you if you have a very cool undertone. And then Lisa Eldridge's New Wave. This is from the Insanely Saturated line. And I knew I just wanted to swatch this last because I think it's the most purple of everything. Ooh, it's not that purple compared to all these like pinky things. Do you see that? Ooh, ah, that's interesting. It's definitely giving me Firebird vibes. It definitely does. But yeah, that's, those are like my purpley leaning lipsticks. Like if you were to like they, they, these look very pink in the, in the viewfinder, but if you put these next to actual pinks, they're not pink. And of course these stain my arm. Okay, moving on to the vibrant coral category, orange tones and pink tones. So let's get started. Orange tones, we have hot and spicy. This is from Catrice. This is a lovely lipstick. I don't understand how this hasn't expired yet because this is one of the oldest lipsticks in my collection, but it still sm smells fine. And I love these lipsticks. If you want to repress round pan eyeshadow, this is perfect for it. Um, and then we're going in, this is actually a pink one. Why is it here? This is Tilt from Urban Decay, which I've already tried to declutter in the past. I don't love this anymore. 
I really don't. So why why did I hang on to this? I thought it was miss gonna miss it in my collection, that's why. And then I have because just because it had to go somewhere, Morange from MAC, which is a true true orange. I don't have anything else like it in my lipstick collection. And from um Gucci May Coral in the Voile, which is again a more it's more pink, perhaps. Oh, it's very sheer. Does it still show up over these swatches? Let me try building it up. So this is our Sedgway into the pinky toned ones. And this is Kiss Kiss Hibiscus from Catrice, which has actually been the one I, I wear more than Hot and Spicy because it's got that pink, which I like. Um, then we also have Impassion from MAC. This is an OG for me. It's like that pinky coral that I like. I also have Checkmate from Urban Decay, which is like a vibrant pinky tone. It's definitely more pink than Tilt is. These are so similar, I need to get rid of some. <laughs> and then I have the Hydra Matte in 407 in Coral Competence from Catrice. And this was part of the lipsticks that had a bit of an accident, but this is really pretty. It's more reddish tone though than any of this. It's like a reddish toned coral. And this smells so strong with watermelon. Why? I mean, it's such a, this is my favorite one. Or maybe, yeah, this is my favorite one of the bunch. This is a very vibrant shade. It's almost neon. Um, and then I have Fet from Glossier. This is their, what formula is this? The Ultra Lip. And I remember this being pink, so I'm hoping I'm right. Oh, it's very similar to the Essence one, actually. Not as intense, but shade-wise for sure. Okay, like that. And then I just have two from Lisa Eldridge. This is Wonder Wheel. This is a luxuriously lucent. Oh, <laughs> that's like the same as this, perhaps? That's May Coral, hmm. So that may be a dupe. And then I have Rainbow Spill from the Insanely Saturated, which is like another like bright neon pinky coral. See, this is why I can get rid of some of these because I have these two, like those three can take care of almost everything I've got going on here. Um, save for these more orange tone things, but I don't wear those that often. So yeah, that's the entire array of vibrant corals I have in my lipstick collection. Moving into vibrant pinks next. So I've got a couple of these and these, if I go for a pink, I tend to go for this and not something rosy. Um, OG Candy Yum Yum from MAC. And this is like that neon white based bright pink with a lot of blue. Um, then I think we're gonna go in with Velvet Carnival from Lisa Eldridge. This already leans a little bit more purple, I feel. Um, but it's a very stunning shade. Love that. And then I have this one from Catrice. This is 120 Pink Addiction. And I feel that's quite similar to the Lisa Eldridge. It's got a bit more warmth. Do you see that? It's intense, but it also has warmth. And then this Shine Bomb one in Scandalous Pink from Catrice. This has a different formula, it's more shiny, but it does have that bluer undertone. Do you see that? And then I have Matte Orchid from Milani. And this is why all my lipsticks had accidents, because this one got stuck. And you can just see that this is like one of the most blue toned, most intense, vibrant pinks. Um, Menace from Urban Decay has been one of my favorites for years. But again, I don't think I still need that. Yeah, see Velvet Carnival is Menace. So I have that in a more updated formula. And finally, Love Before Breakfast from Gucci. This is in their satin formula. And this is really intense, but it's... Like if you look at it in the bullet, it looks a bit differently, I feel, and it's more similar to the Catrice one. So again, do I need both? The Catrice one was a bit mangled, so perhaps get rid of the Catrice, keep this. And now we're getting to my favorites. We're getting into reds.
And I've got six different categories within reds. Yes, you could just buy one red lipstick for sure, but I have way too many. <laughs> so let me get through it. These are vibrant pinky toned reds, which I like. Uh, this is all fired up from Maybelline, which is which is used to be one of my favorites already. My arm is so stained. <laughs> Look at that. And this is like very coral leaning. So again, do I still need this? Not sure. Um, I think this one may be similar. Pink positive from Essence, their Hydra Matte one. Um, that would be a nice replacement for it. It's more reddish tone though. But I also have Crush which is from Glossier. This is their Generation G lipstick. And this is probably not going to show up in a swatch because this is like terrible in a swatch. If you apply these, you need to use lip balm under them and then they actually do show up a bit better. But I love this for that very blurry, just sort of bitten kind of look. And then I have uh, Lasting Passion from MAC, which is again, really, really pretty. A bit more red perhaps. Ooh, yeah, I like that. It's that uh, powder kiss line that they came out with. It's a very blurry sort of effect. And then I have Lost Cherry from Charlotte Tilbury. And this is, it's a very different shade from anything else here, but it's definitely more pinky toned, but it is warm. <laughs> so it looks peach compared to everything else. And finally, 69 from Urban Decay, and this is a strawberry red. Like if you think of the shade of strawberries, then this would be it. Ooh, that, could tr that Essence one is very close to it, but I prefer the Urban Decay one. I have Atomic Cherry, which I had hoped would be more like Wonder Wheel, um, but it's definitely more like reddish toned, like, it's not even pink. It's more like a corally red. And then I have Strawberry Shock, and this is one of my favorites from Lisa Eldridge. This is one of her insanely saturated ones. And this is again, perhaps a little bit more orange. It's not as pink. These are my orange toned red lipsticks. And as you can see, I've got a few. The OG is Lady Danger from MAC. This is very close to an actual, actual orange. So this is very different from some other things I've got here, I think. Um, this one from Zara is close to Lady Danger though. This is uh, Ultimate in number 16. They still do this. And this has gotten the worst of the beating of when I when that Milani lipstick got stuck. So, but yeah, I've always felt it's very close to it. It's really nice, but it smells really strongly of vanilla, which is why I don't really reach for it. Then I have M01 from Zishi. Again, the packaging of these is so pretty. And this is lovely, but it's very orange. Like it looked far more red on the website than this. It's like closer to, it's like even more orange than Lady Danger. How do you do that? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> and then we have a Blaze from H&M. This is a cream formula. So not something I tend to reach for in terms of like a red lip. And we have Velvet Morning, which as far as orange tone reds go, this is now my favorite. Um, for sure. Velvet Dragon. Um, this is nice, but it's sort of like brown and orange at the same time. It's just very yellow toned and it's not perfect for my skin tone, but it's a Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and I, this is definitely one of her more unique ones. So these are my orange toned ones. Let me rope in the brown toned ones next as well. So I have Gash from Urban Decay, which is more like a blood red. I could have put this perhaps with my more intense red ones, but yeah, it looks very plum compared to all of this warmth. And then I have Max Chili, which is one of my favorites. Um, but this is like, see that continuation of like Velvet Dragon to this, they're very close. And then I think I want to put this um, Velvet Passion lipstick from Kiko in shade 338 or 380. I don't know the shade number exactly, but I believe it's called Cinnabar. And I think it's very close to Max Chili. Ooh, it's more red, a bit more brown. And then let's swatch that next to Velvet Cinnabar from Lisa Eldridge. Um, because I feel these are all like, once you put these on the lips, they don't look that different.
and another one of these uh, moonshot ones that I said, oh, but this is more brown toned. So let me swatch it here. Oh, oh, that's very close to the Kiko one, actually. It's a bit more red than the Lisa. And then this is the Kiko one that I had misplaced. This is the Gossamer Emotion Creamy Lipstick in 132. Oh, and this is very red compared to this. Very much more reddish toned. Yeah, these are all of my orange toned and brown toned red lipsticks. Blue toned reds. These are your classic reds that everybody has. My favorite is Velvet Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge. Should I? Well, we'll just keep swatching here. I hope you don't mind. So here we have what Velvet Ribbon looks like. One from Kiko is the same. This is the Velvet Passion Lipsticks in 312. Um, I already showed you this in my Lisa Eld uh, my Kiko video, so these are the same. So if you're looking for a dupe for Velvet Ribbon, 312 from Kiko. Then Red Carpet Red is a bit deeper than Velvet Ribbon. Like, Velvet Ribbon is very blue and very vibrant. And this is just a little bit deeper than that. And I feel similarly about Max Russian Red. This is one of my OG favorite red lipsticks. Both of these actually are. Um, this is again blue tone, but it is deeper than Velvet Ribbon. And then I have Goldie Red from Gucci. This is sort of like, it kind of keeps the middle ground between an orange toned and a blue toned red. It's more orange compared to anything else, but on the lips, it definitely does look like a classic red. And finally, one of my favorite reds from Catrice, the ultimate matte in Rouge Lala. And mine got destroyed, oh no. Um, but yeah, this is a great classic red from the drugstore, but it's been discontinued. Um, and that's what that looks like. And finally in reds, darker reds. I'm just going to swatch them on the same arm. Uh, let me, yeah, let me start here. This is the Joyful Holiday Sparkling Lips Lipstick in 04 from Kiko. And this is like a burgundy leaning kind of shade. So it's definitely got a bit more plum running through it. Not as red as I'd like it to be, but it's pretty and the packaging is pretty as well. Um, this is definitely a very weird shade. This is New York Apple from MAC. And yes, this is a metallic, but I thought it looked really interesting. I have only put it on my lips once, but because it is sheer, it actually looked really pretty on. So I did already put it on my lipstick lips once, but I haven't worn it out yet. So I can't say anything about the wear time about this one just yet, but definitely an interesting shade. And then I have Scarlet Spell from um, Charlotte Tilbury. And this is more berry leaning almost, but it is still a red, at least in my book it is. And then I also have Magic Red from Charlotte Tilbury. And that's, oh, it's far more plummy than Scarlet Spell. In my brain, Scarlet Spell is darker, but yeah, these are very close together. You probably don't need both. <laughs> And then I have a, a Redefined Love from Catrice. This is their Demi Matte Formula. And this I feel is a dupe for a, a Lisa Eldridge shade that we've got coming up in a minute. I did already show you this in a swatch video. So in a short, I should say. Um, so this is Velvet Jazz, which is one of my favorite deeper reds. And this is what it looks like. It's got a bit more plum compared to that. Uh, but Magic Red from Charlotte Tilbury is close to Velvet Jazz as well. And finally, we have Velvet Myth, which is more of like a burgundy leaning shade, but it's still definitely a red. Um, especially if you put this up with other berry and plums that I have, it's definitely far more red, but it's pulling more plummy, which is going to be our final category. So I hope you're still with me. Um, these are all of my like deeper Van B shades. And the lightest one I have here is a berry from Pony Effect. And this is in the shade No Secrets. Um, and this is definitely like, it's sort of like between the reds we just finished on and these very Van B shades for sure. Um, and then I have this Shine Bomb lipstick in Cherry Bomb. This is the darkest one, 0, uh, 100. 
And this is the first time in years that Catrice has done like a good berry shade. Um, it's definitely a bit more plum leaning. Um, this one is Legendberry from Catrice. And this one has always been one of my favorite dark shades, but it's in this cream formula. That's just very incredible, difficult, incredibly difficult to wear. <laughs> like this is so difficult to wear. Like it's just too deep and it goes everywhere. Um, Burgundy Blush from Maybelline. This has been a great dark vampy lipstick, but I haven't been wearing these like dark vampy shades in a while. Oh, this pool's pretty brown compared to everything else, huh? Um, Love Liberty from Charlotte Tilbury is like one of the deeper shades she has. So this is Love Liberty from uh, Charlotte Tilbury and it's the deepest one I have by her. It's a very pretty berry shade for sure. Then I have this burgundy shade from Kiko. This is 318 from the Velvet Passion line. I was hoping it could be similar to something like Velvet Myths from, Charlotte, from Lisa Eldridge, but it's far too plump for that. Uh, but it's very pretty. And then I have Velvet Midnight from Lisa Eldridge. This is like a black and berry, so it's very different to anything else I have. It's very, very purple. And then I have Dark Side. This is like one of my favorite berries from MAC. And then I also have Max Sin. These feel very dry. I haven't used these in a while. Yeah, these feel expired, so these may have to go. So these are all of the berry shades. I can definitely get rid of a few. I feel these all look very, very similarly and I don't wear these shades enough anymore. I've saved the messiest bit for last. My arm is so stained. I hope it comes off. Uh, I have to go to work tomorrow, so I hope I don't show up with stained arms. Um, liquid lipsticks I have found, I'm just not reaching for all that often uh, anymore. I have really liked these Kaleidos things and some of these Roman things like these K-Beauty things I like so much better than some of these like more Western liquid lipsticks, you could say. Um, so uh, let me just show you. Oh, this isn't a liquid lip. Oh, well, it was. Oh, that that wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, well, um, this is actually a pretty good mauve shade. This is Precious Rituals from Kiko in 05. So this was limited edition, but this is destroyed. Um, but that is a pretty shade, but it's also a little bit like tough to work with. So I've forgotten I own this. Um, this is why we're doing this. Um, I'm not gonna go like by category with this or should I? Maybe I should. Um, so as you can see, I have a lot of neutrals and I don't really tend to wear neutral lipsticks in a liquid formula. I just don't. So why do I have so many? Dusty Rose from Anastasia. I always keep this one because it's my favorite, one of my favorite shades from Anastasia, but oh, this still smells okay. That's what that one looks like. And it's it's still like one of my, like this is like of such a great mauve tone, but I don't wear these. Lovesick, I think, from the top of my head. Yes, from KVD. This is such a stunning cool tone pinky shade. Again, this still smells fine. And I don't have, yeah, I do have this enough in my lip, in my lipsticks, who am I kidding? Um, and this is, ooh, Veronica, which is like a really cool toned brownie plum. Like that in a liquid lipstick I want. And I think actually, yes, where did it go? No, yes. This shade is Mercury Wave from Kaleidos. Like those two would work really well together, so. Some of these are okay. Um, this I can probably get rid of. This is Lolita from KVD. Kept this around because it was such an OG, like classic shade, but I definitely don't wear that. And that would definitely be more of a bullet lipstick kind of shade for me. This is Double Dare, which is that reddish toned nude that I also showed you in my, um, in my bullet lipsticks. I really like this. This is more pink, I think. This is the Romand uh, Zero Velvet Tint in Pink Tassel. This is a very moussey texture, which I like. But yeah, that's too pink for my liking. Um, this is, I remember this being too orange. This is the Peripera Ink Velvet 
in nude, a bouquet nude. This was sent to me in PR. I mean, it's pretty as far as a nude goes, but I don't tend to wear this kind of shade ever. Um, um, the Vinyl Ink, Superstay Vinyl Ink in Witty from Maybelline. I don't, I just don't think I like this formula. I mean, I love this shade, but I don't love this formula. It's, it's a bit tacky, a bit sticky, but I do like this shade. And then I have these brown tones from Kaleidos. This is in Skinship, which is perhaps a bit too yellow toned, but it makes for a great ombre lip with this shade in Cold Smoke, which is a bit better for me. So yeah, these two together, this by itself is not pretty, but that is nice. So I would keep both of those, I'm sure. This is from Sydney Grace. I think I got this as a gift from someone or it was in a mystery bag. This is in Gracie. And this is not a liquid lip, this is a liquefied lipstick. So it's got, it stays creamy, but therefore it does transfer, even though I love the shade. It's such a great cool tone mauve, like so pretty. And then I just have these, and these are like reds, kinda, but not really kinda shades, so I just chuck them in here, just so we can have a look. Um, this is from Roma, and again, this is from the same line. This is Earl Grey Shawl. And this was far too warm tone for my liking. Like, that's straight up orange against my skin tone, which I didn't like. And this is Berry Knit, which I thought was going to be a very different shade when I ordered it. But this is definitely more of like a warm, reddish brown, which is why that also isn't my favorite of this lineup. Um, I have this one from Milani. This is the Amore Metallics Lip Cream, Lip Cream in Chromatic Addict. This is nice, but I think it has expired. Oh, phew. It's, it's still okay, but this smelled like fruity candy. And yes, that's a metallic liquid lip in this really weird shade. But I used to wear it as an ombre lip with this shade from ColourPop. This is two lips. And this is a very brown shade. And it still smells okay, actually. It's a cool tone brown. Ooh, I like that. But I don't wear it, ever. It's gotten a bit thick. And then I have Cognac. This is like a reddish tone brown from uh, Kaleidos. Let me swatch it here, because I hope it's... Oh, see, that I like much better than those other two. So that shade works better for me. And then I have Smeared Rouge, which is a darker red, so I should put it with the dark reds, which are over here. Um, so those are all of like the nudie shades. I can definitely get rid of most of these. If I keep just one or two, I would be happy. Um, I think we should go on with these unusual shades. So I've got a blue. This is Nocturnal from ABH. And this is a stunning navy in terms of like, Navy blue lipsticks. I haven't found anything quite like it, so I would like to keep this around just because. I also have Agave from Kaleidos. This is like a teal lipstick. Ooh, that feels very sheer compared to that, but yeah, it does it does work, people. Um, but you definitely need to go in layers with this, and then it will work. And then I have uh, Scorpion Fruit from Kaleidos, which is a black. There we go. And then I also have Queen of the Night, which is their black and purple. See, if I go for liquid lip lipsticks nowadays, I make it these more unusual things uh, and then play around with them. And that's why I love the Kaleidos ones because you can actually like blend these and like create a blurred effect and blend them in with other liquid lipsticks so much more easily than those really drying down things. We have Double Dare, no. That's not what this is called. This is a go-go from KVD. And this is orange, like very vibrant orange. I don't have an orange lipstick this vibrant. This is more vibrant than more orange from MAC, but this I think may have expired. Eh, shame. And this is Bauhaus, which is like my favorite magenta shade of all time. This still smells okay. Ooh, that's very pretty. Haven't worn it in a while, but yeah, pretty. This I believe has expired. Oh, it's separated as well. This is the Amore Metallics from Milani. This is Automatic Touch. 
yeah, this smells a bit like, mm. but this is, this is the best purple lipstick I've ever found. I don't think I should still be putting that on my lips. And then I have Madison from Anastasia, which is so pretty, again, in terms of like a magenta kind of shade, but this is more purple leaning. This is a bit more pink, the KVD one, and this is more purple leaning. Uh, this still smells fine too. And then I have these vibrant pinks. Let's continue there. This is one of my favorites, actually. This is Heart Fuchsia Pink from the Peri Para Ink Velvet line. This is really pretty. Let me show you. Like, it's like this deeper fuchsia pink. It looks almost like a red, but not quite. And I really like this formula as well. It's just that nude shade wasn't perfect for me. This is Capricious from the Maybelline Super Ink Vinyl Ink line. And this is my favorite shade from that line. If I were to go for a liquid lip in this kind of formula, I would make it this. And then I have Cactus Flower from Kaleidos. Um, this is really pretty as well. It's got a bit more depth than compared to the Maybelline one. And then I have this. This is the Fenty Beauty Poutsicle in Strawberry Sangria. Or sangria, I'm not sure how we're supposed to say that. Um, but this is like a red. It's really pretty, but it's a stain. So that's going to be fun taking off in a minute. Um, and then I have Wild Apple from Kaleidos. This is like a pink toned red. It's like more fuchsia actually, now that I swatch it. And then I have this girly red, I believe it's called girlish red uh, from the Peri Para Ink Velvet line. And this is like an orange toned red. It's really pretty. And then I have Atlantic City from Ofra. This is the blue toned liquid red that I kept. And this is usually what I take with me when I travel because this is like one of the very few things that stays put all day and looks this intense and vibrant. So, but it's starting to feel a bit dry. I'm not sure about that. And then very, very finally, finally, intense, like dark reds. Um, and I hope I still have enough space here. So this is Smeared Rouge from Kaleidos. And this is that brown toned red that was also in the Smoky Nostalgia, but this is like definitely more like a deeper red. And this Roman shade is actually a dupe for Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Jazz. This is in Villain Vest from their Zero Velvet Tints. Um, so let me swatch that here. Ooh, Smeared Rouge is quite similar to that as well. So I probably don't need to keep both. What do you guys think? This is the Kaleidos and that is the Romand. Hmm. Then I have Dahlia, which is really nice as well. But it's a little bit more vibrant, I think. Yeah. Like this is um, like a blue tone red, but then with more depth to it. And then I also have Rubino, which is like a black and red. This is really interesting. Put that on my knuckle. And finally, one of my other favorite shades from the Maybelline Vinyl Ink line is in the shade Royal. And that looked really nice on as well. So there we have it. Those are all of my liquid lipsticks. And I, I think, again, we can get rid of some of these. What do you guys think? Um, so yeah, I'm going to be taking off these swatches. This was the entire makeup inventory and collection video. I hope that the swatches were useful, that you got something out of this series. I would really love to know. And this means I can start gearing up for a decluttering series because now I know what I have and I know what I wear and what I don't wear. And I think going through it like this was really helpful for my brain as well to just know what's going on. So I would like to thank you so very much for following along and watching these videos. If you haven't watched the other ones yet, and this is the first thing you're seeing, I did an entire week with all of these videos. So if you just go back on the channel, you can find every single one of them because they all went uh, live on this channel back to back. So I did a full week of these with six of these videos, swatching out lots of different parts of my makeup collection. So I hope uh, you have a really, really stunning day. Stay tuned, subscribe if you want to see that decluttering series because it's coming in March. And without further ado, I hope you have a great day and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.